and we're live. Um, real quick, when we're done today, Sevon's going to be going live for an affiliate series uh, podcast. So head on over to the Sevon podcast and listen to affiliate series. Right now it says we have zero. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Talking to myself here. Uh, first off, this is how we're going to start this episode. We're going to start with this guy who claims to have squatted 550 pounds and ran a sub five minute mile within the same hour. I talked about it on shut up and scribble guys, a complete douche. The key word is claim. He claim, didn't actually yeah, yeah. do it. And really, so here's really what we're looking at here. I already showed this. Listen, look at my comment, not even close to a squat. So still no one on earth. And someone respond, Randy Boner responds, not even close to not needing braces to me because my teeth are fucked up. <laughs> uh, so I just wanted to read that comment and tell Randy Boner to go eat something long and hard and made mostly of skin. Yeah, I also commented on, so Dave collaborated on that post with that guy and Dave knows what a squat is, so I don't know why he would do that. So I commented on his last week in review and asked him why he would do that. Um, so if you guys want to go like my comment, so it goes to the top and he responds to it on the next week in review. I <laughs> hope pretty, he pulls your comment up. Yeah, it was pretty aggressive. <laughs> it was pretty aggressive. I'm not going to lie. So Dave, since uh, if you're watching this, you're not watching this, but I love you. And I was just trying to be a little funny. Yeah, he's never going to watch this. Um, you need to get, <laughs> we need to get you like uh some sort of a mic or like plug in Apple headphones because these mics on Apple headphones are really good. Um, oh yeah. So I have those, but when I plug them into my Mac, they only work as the speaker, but the microphone doesn't read through my Mac. I think yours works because you plug it into your microphone. Interesting. Um, well, no, I'm, my that microphone like is, shit. yeah, I'm using my microphone. So these aren't working as a microphone. It's this. Uh, maybe you just need a. I don't know. Do I sound bad? Yeah, you sound horrible, but it's all good. Um, not to make you feel insecure or anything. Do I feel? Do I sound worse than John Young? Mm, no, you sound about the same as John. The same as John. Maybe okay. just stay a little closer, and you'll be fine. Well, the um, mic is right here. Oh, Travis, look, Travis is going to send you a mic. It's probably going to be molded in the size in the you know whatever a mold of his thingy. You know. <laughs> 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 All right, we're gonna get started. We're dropping three uh, essentially tested videos. Kind of. This is gonna be our new version of tested. I like it. It's live. It's way freaking cooler. We're answering any questions in the chat. If you have questions about the workout, movements, etc., drop them in the chat. Somebody was asking about uh, Carl of CBD HGR CBD was asking about bar muscle ups and stringing bar muscle ups together rather than rings. So if you're out there, Carl um in a galaxy not so far away please comment your question so we can pull it up all right we're gonna start oh here we go wow i don't think dude. the other i don't think the non-live version of tested should die <coughs> we'll definitely do this more frequently it, uh less frequently they won't die but i want this to be more frequent this is way cooler. yeah yeah i i like this better yeah all right so we're gonna share a screen we're gonna start with other training We'll, we'll go anticlimactic here. Um, boom, boom, boom. Talk about this workout. What were you guys doing? Uh, so here we did three minutes on, two minutes off for six sets. 30 cal. We alternated between 30 cal echo bike, max calorie ski, 30 cal ski, max calorie echo bike. So just alternating back and forth. The goal is to get like similar numbers. So if you do your 30 calories and 90 seconds quick transition you have like 90 seconds to do the other machine you should be getting like similar number of calories okay so three on two off six sets alternating three sets are going to be a 30 cal echo bike buy-in and max calorie ski in the remaining time the other three sets are going to be a 30 cal ski buy-in max cal echo in the remaining time what calorie would you prescribe for women on that 25 25 25 on the echo too. I would go 25 ski, 20 echo. Mm, that might be a good call. All right. You're about to watch the only time in my life I've ever looked unathletic. Uh, 
there's some dingbat doing <laughs> 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 me trying to do backwards single unders. Holy sheesh. Wow, dude. F fuck jump ropes. I'm not supposed to be swearing, but man, I was getting pissed in this session. I was practicing doing triple unders, but starting with a triple because I normally do double unders into my triple unders. My wrist speed looked horrible. Horrid. I'm practicing well, that tomorrow. We're practicing It that is tomorrow. horrible, so that's why it looked like that. Oh, oh, okay. So that we were just practicing jump rope skills here. This workout was actually Jason's idea. This is the brightest idea Jason has ever had when me and him have trained together. So I got to give this credit where credit's due. Uh, this workout is freaking awesome. So cool. We have these 90 pound jerry cans. First off, let me address this. If I was in this hundred bar facing burpee workout, let me tell you, my hundred burpee for time score is 409. Bar facing burpees are faster. Way faster. I would beat both of these chicken wings, dude. I'd stuff them in the dirt, dude. I'd drag them along. They'd be, they'd be freaking following in my wake. Just riding my coattails to fame and success on Brian Spins live show. But I'm not involved, so it is going to be what it is. Here we go. HGR CBD Athletics, let me answer this question real quick. In a galaxy only 3,000 miles away, what if you can string two to three ring muscle-ups but struggle connecting two bar muscle-ups? What are Sentinel suggestions on fixing this? Bryson? I was just going to say, it, I mean, it could really depend, which is a horrible answer, but I mean, I would like to see a video of seeing video would help Yeah, I, a lot of times on bar muscle ups, people's descent into the next rep throws off their kip swing or their arch position. And that's what I would look for first is how does their descent look? Are they coming through the bars, like almost hollow on the way down so that when they hit the bottom yeah. position, they can go into an arch. Um, and then snap back to that hollow position, open the hip aggressively, turn over. That's what I would look for. The uh, yeah, the first thing I would I would look for is where the feet are and like coming down off the top mm -hmm. of the bar. Like if your feet are in front of you and you keep that sort of hollow position on the way down, it's easier to make the second rep be the same as the first. Yeah. So Carl, send that video over either to my Instagram, Bryson's, or the Sentinel um, community chat on Fitter. Either way, so we can give you some cues. Um, so this workout, Jason came up with it. We were looking for something to finish the day with. It was in we have these 95 pound jerry cans, 95 pounds each hand that are legit like military surplus jerry cans filled with sand and water. And we did an 800 meter farmer carry. And every time you break, you have to run back to the starting line and then back to your cans. So it was just a crazy forearm pump grind of a workout jason absolutely destroyed it the, and the 800 meters is out and back it's yeah not like a loop we didn't do 400s or anything like that so basically by the time you get to the out turnaround if you have to put your cans anywhere down or down anywhere out there you're doing an 800 meter run and it's not a fast 800 meter run but play nice mason <laughs> <laughs> all right next video this is a 60 workout that's coming out. Let me check the date to be certain. It's next week, I believe. The three rounds for time? Yeah, I think it's next Wednesday. I thought that was today. Or was it today? Wow, stop that. Or All right, yesterday. this is today's yesterday. 60 workout. Bryson did it Saturday? Uh, Yeah. Friday? Friday? No, Friday, Friday. Okay. Three rounds for time. Boom, and we're playing. All right, we're going to watch this all the way through. This is going to be fun. Three rounds for time. 21 sumo del of high pull, 21 overhead squats. Make it full screen. Oh, yeah, full screen. You historically say that you have a weakness hinging. Yeah, I would say my two biggest weaknesses are hinging and grip. Um, so one of the biggest things I was really excited about this workout was that I didn't, it didn't feel super hingy to me. Um, and typically sumo deadlifts hype, sumo deadlift high pulls do, but it was really grippy. And that was kind of the limiter for me here. So I was just, I was already planning on breaking from the start. 
Did um, you hook and, rip? Yeah. You pull a little early. Yeah. Hip, I think focusing on straight arms and extending your hips rapidly will allow the bar to float up a little more before you're kind of pulling. Um, so good at squatting. Bryson's got an amazing squat. The overhead squat he's going to destroy. <laughs> I love weightlifting couplets. They just are so grindy. I know you hate them. Yeah, I think they look ugly on paper. Bryson thinks they look ugly. I think they look beautiful. Like one of my favorite weightlifting couplets is deadlift overhead squat, 2159. 275 deadlift, 135 overhead squat. Disgusting workout. I do think <clears> – <throat> I really like this one, um, which is why I think I was so like down to do it when you asked me to. Like the twenty, the three rounds of 21-21, just a nine, you and a 95-pound barbell was kind of cool. Did you need that chalk break? So when I hit 10 seconds on the clock, I realized I didn't chalk up and I was like, all right, I'll get chalk in the transition, but then I can't like rest on top of getting that chalk. Okay. So I had no chalk in my hands before that. If we were to, <clears throat> I want to see if I can catch so people can see this. Nope. See how your hip is muted still. You don't have hip extension and look at how bent your arm is. Yeah. That would be my one cue to work on. See what I think. Hobble. Yeah, because and I do a good job of that and like snatching clean or right. not doing that. Mm -hmm. So I think I need to think about sumo deadlift high pull more like that. But it's yep. also not something I've done a lot of. Um, but after doing this workout, I was like, that's probably some a movement I should be doing like once a week. Yeah, it's a it's a really good hinge movement. Um, working hip extension speed. And way more functional than people give it credit for. I felt someone in the Sentinel chat actually gave an amazing like real life application for it where she was in the military and like lifting up jerry cans and putting them in the back of Humvees essentially from the ground with that top handle, like lifting it up and putting it in at waist height. Perfect uh, translation to real life functional movement. I like sumo delve high pulls and I like all nine of the foundational CrossFit exercises. I feel like I can just see exactly why all nine of them are what they are. Yeah. <clears throat> I think, yeah, I don't know. I haven't really heard anyone say the sumo deadlift high pull isn't functional, but people say it all the time. What's more likely to show up in quarterfinals, a couplet of gymnastic, gymnastic, weightlifting, weightlifting, or mono, mono. I don't think any like, mirrored modality couplets will come up. I don't think we'll get anything like this. I think everything will be MWG, WG, WM, GM, whatever. Well, yeah, but most likely I think it's probably gymnastic, gymnastic, like a GHD, mm. GHD ring muscle up. I don't think it'll show up either, but it, but to answer the question more It would likely, be a triplet if it did. I don't, it wouldn't be a couplet. Yeah. What kind of salt? Oh, you drink podium salt? Yeah. We have element. And that stuff is like, <coughs> dude, it's like the meth. Podium I'm on, has I'm on whatever uh, Daniel Brandon's oh. mom was on. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon? Come on, bro. It's your third <laughs> round. Pick that freaking bar up, son. Let's go. Yeah, I'm mean, really bad at sumo deadlift high pool. Give me a break. Sheesh. Nice tights, though. I do like your Nike tights. The Nike sign looks dope. Ooh, relight. Crack. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one dude lots of potassium lots of sodium uh, yeah that was unnecessary this i got an athlete yeah. who i want to watch more of himself work out so he can see stuff like that and say hey i yeah. probably didn't need to do that yeah i mean when i uploaded this video it is you really easy me. to be like yeah, I didn't need to do that. But also, I heard Pat Vellner talk about this one time. He was, like, talking about watching himself in videos and be like, oh, well, like, if I had just gone, like, a 20-second break instead of a 30-second break there or whatever. But in the moment, like, if you could have, you would have. Like, it's good to think about and stay on top of transitions, but also, like, don't beat yourself up afterwards. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I could have gone so much faster if I just didn't do that. It's like right. well, in the moment, in the moment, you probably needed to do that. It's not a tool where you're saying, "Oh, I could have not done that." It's a tool to, for next time in the middle of it when you start to do it. Say, "Okay, but I don't need to do it this long." Yeah, and it's just pushing you to be a half second faster <clears throat> here or there. I think. 
Yeah, so uh, Sentinel Athlete, DM me on Instagram today, Noah Viles. Shout out, Noah. Boils um, or Viles? Viles, I think. Boils, maybe. Boils. Um, and he asked me what I got in this workout. He was like, yeah, dude, you probably smoked me. I did it in 501, <laughs> over, over a minute faster than I did it. <laughs> and, and I, was like, uh, I was just like, I mean, I told him like that was a great time. And, you know, when someone sends me something like that, I'm like, oh, well, maybe I could have gone at least like 30 seconds faster. But I, on this day, in this moment, after like the stuff I did before it, 616 was what I had in me. So, so to be honest, this with wall balls would get me so excited. If it were a, if it were a wall ball, sumo of high pull, double under, I would freak out, and I would give Colton, Jason, and Dallin back shots all day. So, just saying. Well, what would be the standard? Like touch your knuckles to your collarbones at the top, or something? No, I think uh, barbell just above the collarbone or above the sternum would probably be the standard, or above the nipples, maybe, um, or more likely is elbows above the top of the shoulders. Mm. Um, I think it's probably, so it could, but it wouldn't be a true sumo deadlift high pull then. Cause Oh, you know, stop, stop, stop. Dude, if it's just nipples, then you, then you're no, going no, no, no. elbow now. above the shoulder. Right. I can do that with a really low. Okay, dude. Sorry. I'm just saying I, I, if it showed up, I would want it to look like sumo deadlift high pulls from your level one and your level two. Well, there's not a lot of things that show up in competition that they can make look like that due to the nature of online competition. But I see what you're saying. <coughs> oh, question from True. How often do you go 95 plus percent? I'm assuming rate of perceived intensity effort mm -hmm. in training sessions. <laughs> um, I would say this is something that I've been working on since I moved here, really. Um. <clears throat> And I think it can depend on the day too. So that day I started with every five minutes for six sets, 18 calorie row, six ring muscle up, 12 calorie row. And that I hit really hard. Um, and I've been starting every day with a more engine based piece. And I'm going to do that every day until quarters. And those ones, I want to make sure like 90%, 95% plus effort in those, no matter what. <clears throat> and then if I feel like afterwards we do like a CrossFit workout that has different movements or something like that, that I can hit that hard, then I'll go for it. Like, I feel like I hit that three rounds pretty hard. Mm -hmm. Maybe the first workout <clears throat> and the lifting affected it a little bit, but for what I had then <clears throat> it felt like 95 plus percent effort. Um, and then I think it just depends on if you mean like effort or effort in the moment based on how tired you're feeling or like 95% of my potential, like fresh. Not mm, that's quite, quite different. I would yeah. say every day I hit 95% and maybe three times a week, I hit 95% on a lift and a workout in the same day. Um, but we definitely go heavy every day. Mm -hmm. Um, and definitely, you know, intensity is my, my good old best buddy, old pal. So I try to get that quite a bit. Um, I think a sell your soul type effort to me. Uh, Sarah Cooper saying Bill and Chase suggested once a week to do this. That to me is like 105%. Sell your soul. Sell your soul is like 24.1. Yeah. And I, to be honest, I'm doing that. <laughs> that was the first time in two years. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're freezing <clears throat> a little bit, dude. But okay, you're back. All right. So. That brings us to our last video, and this is what I think. Me and JR both would make a fantastic workout for semifinals. They could call it semifinal Lila. Lila is a new benchmark that came out about four years ago. Somebody will correct me. Three to five years ago, a series of new girl benchmark workouts came out. Ingrid. 10 rounds for time, three snatches, three bar facing burpees. Gretel, 10 rounds for time, three clean and jerks, three bar facing burpees. Ellen with an E, three rounds for time, 20 burpees, 21 alternating dumbbell snatches with a 50, 12 dumbbell thrusters with two 50s or 35s. Andy, A N D I, 
It's a hundreds barbell chipper at 65 pounds for guys, 45 pounds for ladies. I'm going to get the order messed up, but it's hang power snatch, sumo dev high pull, push press, and front squat. 100 reps of each. I know it ends on the front squat. I think it starts with hang power snatch. I don't know. I Those four movements, 100 reps of each. Lane, which was a Nicole-esque workout, uh, five rounds for max reps three quarter body weight hang power snatch and handstand pushups um rest two minutes between sorry it was a lynn not nicole style lynn style workout where you have two movements max reps rest two minutes between each attempt max unbroken reps and then finally my favorite lila 10 down to one ring muscle ups and body weight clean and jerks an absolutely disgusting couplet of a workout. One, a muscle up and a body weight clean and jerk. And 55 reps of each to boot. So savage. I would assume, talk to JR a little bit about this. I would guess that out of the top 500 men in the world and the top 500 women in the world, maybe 100 of them at best to combine, 100 of those 1,000 athletes are even aware that all of these new benchmarks came out and I would bet half of them have done most of those benchmarks. And I would bet half of them have done Lila as prescribed. Um, I did this workout with the games athlete. He couldn't do Lila as prescribed cause he's too fat and overweight. Um, we blocked him out of the video for his own benefit because I clapped his absolute cheeks. I did it as prescribed cause I'm 195. We did this workout at 195 insane workout. They should bring it to semifinals. Hopefully, Boz and Dave don't ever see this show because I know they're planning to program it for this year's semifinals. And if they watch this show this early out, they're going to change the workout. But I really hope they don't because, man, 10 down to one muscle ups and bodyweight cleaning tricks is a savage way to test strength, skill, capacity in general. It's going to separate the games athletes from the imposters. And so, with that, going to share our screen and we're going to watch me do this workout. And I probably like it so much because there's maybe one person in the world who could beat me in it. And I'm not exaggerating. Maybe, maybe two. I don't know. One that I for sure know of Jeff Adler, I think would be super hard to beat in this workout. <laughs> yeah, we weren't kidding. We blocked out the person. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you who it is. Which guys um, I think this one would is specifically like because of the gymnastics, it's a good one to just have as a set weight anyway, which makes it even better to use in a semifinal. Like the what benchmark you... workouts that have, you know, this at your body weight or percentage of your body weight are cool as a benchmark workout. But in semifinals, they typically make it one yeah, standardized exactly. weight. And in, in this workout, it works really well because it's paired with a gymnastics movement. So the little guy like gets an advantage on the rings. He doesn't also need to get an advantage by using a lighter barbell. Right, 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 right. So if they're going to do that in a semifinal anyway, which they would standardize the weight for all of it, it's good that it's paired with the gymnastics movement. Yeah, this would be standardized, I would assume, at 195, which was the regional body weight for Linda back in 2018. It was like a 195 mm -hmm. bench for men, I believe. Um, so a 195 clean and jerk I think would be cool. I think, I think they do it at 205 if they did it. You think they I think if they did it at 205, it would really skew towards clean and jerk rather than muscle up, in my opinion. Yeah, maybe. Maybe not. The barbells are so far back, Jake, because we had them advancing 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 until the set of one was essentially right underneath the rings. So we'll do our sets of 10, and then I'll throw my bar forward. And let it roll a little bit to the nine placard. Um, and then I'll jog back, I think. Maybe I walk for the set of nine muscle-ups. <laughs> We're going to scrutinize my muscle-ups here. I flirt really, really hard on the line of pushing away or not pushing away. And I think it's because I, I dip so fast. And I know it's not as bad as a lot of athletes who actually push away, but man, I ride the line. I've never get got a no rep in competition. I, I think you're close to the line, but but like as but still hundred percent. 
good reps, I would say. Let me see if I can pause it. And pause. Is that good? That's a hard I mean, pause. Shoulders you might have paused a little. Yeah, you might have paused a little late. Oh, can't do it. It's so hard. I can't. Okay. What was the uh, was the set of nine or a set of eight harder in this workout? <laughs> uh, the set of nine was the only one I was unsure about. So I think mm -hmm. I should have. I didn't need to rest before the set of nine. I did rest a little bit. Um. I definitely didn't need to rest before the set of eight. Um, and I think having someone next to me that was pushing me would have caused me to go a little bit faster. Um, which female competitor would wreck this workout? Oh, I just saw that. Tia would absolutely obliterate everyone in the field or yeah. Christy Aramo if she were still competing. Or um, Emma Lawson is a good call. Emma Lawson is a great call. Yeah, Emma Lawson is a great call. But Tia... There's no female in the world that comes even close to her on the rings. Um, it also depends on what weight they use for the girls, I think. Spiegel, I don't think, would crush this workout in person. <laughs> because her, her muscle-ups are yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> Travis just wants to so, – yeah. <laughs> he just wants to get his comment pulled up. We're not pulling your comments up, bro, until you pull out a dub for us in uh, Crescendo. Hey, I think we've got a fourth person. We'll see. If we win crescendo, then Travis gets to come on for a live tested video. Wow. We get to do a workout. We have to do a workout after crescendo in JR's yeah. barn and film it, and then he can come on. Okay. So this is a set of nine. After the first round, I knew I was beating the, uh, the wiener next to me. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, before the workout started, but this is like, uh, this would be like to them. If you picked two of their best movements in the world, it would essentially yeah, it would be a slaughterhouse. See this this rest, I didn't need this. Do you think was, how do you think clean and jerks at 195 are one of your best movements? I think cycling a moderate to heavy barbell, like for singles, single snatches, like if it's single squat snatches, singles squat cleans, singles clean and jerks, singles clusters. I have crazy discipline on a moderate weight barbell. Yeah, that might actually be your best movement. That's not a gymnastics movement. That's that's what I was. That's what I mean. Like yeah, if you're yeah. gonna pair a weightlifting movement, dumbbell snatch for sure is is probably one of my better weightlifting movements. Um, even heavy, like it doesn't matter how heavy. Um, I yes, Mason, I'm 192, so I did it at 195. We we just both agreed to do it at 195. Uh, me and the 230 pound behemoth next to me. <laughs> And this is the round of eight clean and jerks. Mm -hmm. I got to, I pushed the pace like a bit, 10, nine, eight. And then I fell way off six, five, four, three, two, one. I started walking. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm saving this person's credibility, Travis. Okay. So just put a lid on it. <laughs> Pipe down. Okay. I'm being nice. <laughs> Yeah, I we did this workout almost a year ago exactly last January, January 18th, 2023. And I wanted to repeat it. Um, but it's a little too close to quarterfinals to repeat. I think something as challenging as this. I remember when we did it last year, a couple of people ripped really badly. Uh, I don't want anyone to rip. And I think there's I don't I think this is too aggro of a workout to show up in quarterfinals, anyways. This is more of like this is maybe a quarterfinal workout of years past or a semifinal workout for sure. Semifinal or even games. Um dude, yeah, this would be a good games workout. It's such a fun race. Honestly, the set of like five and four were the hardest. On the rings or just in general? On the rings. I was smoked at that point. I'm walking at this point too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mark Hutchinson is 100% banned from this gym. Andy didn't ban him. I banned him. Dude, full on banned. 
Send that guy packing. For the best. It's all good, bro. Is there anything you would fit like, how do you think you would approach a workout like this? If Am you're someone, say you're someone like Black Square, would you have gone unbroken on the muscle ups uh, the whole time? Do you think that was a good call for that person? I think so. Because I mean, if you break, like, I think you just need to slow down your clean and jerks to whatever pace you can do the ring muscle ups unbroken. If you break ring muscle ups, you're sitting around, dude. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. To answer, <coughs> Jared, are games athletes doing any clean and jerk sets unbroken or singles all the way? Singles all the way for sure on this barbell. There's just no reason to control the eccentric at all at that weight. Um, yeah, you can do you can do singles almost as fast, maybe even as fast. Like even if they were going to do in like a set of three, yeah, you can just do fast singles. And each of these reps both on the muscle up and the clean and jerk are so expensive. They're like, you need a place to pace and singles on the barbell is that place. You know, if you're going to unbroken on the rings is for sure the way to go because coming down is such a long break. So if you're going unbroken on the rings, you are going to have to pace the barbell. Um, yeah. And I mean, I'll only spoil this because you won't be able to see it anyway, but black square almost fails their single on, on the ring muscle up. So it's, you know, even if you do a touch and go double on the clean and jerk, a couple reps before that, that could cost you. <laughs> that athlete is participating in I'm out. Um, coach, what cue do I need to keep my feet from going too high on my ring muscle ups? It messes up my transition into the dip on your turnover. Yes. Black square does the same thing. We're going to refer to him as black square. Um, <laughs> or never mind. <laughs> I won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> to fix your feet coming up too high when you turn over is a loss of midline tension. And the best way for me to explain it is if you are in the arch of your muscle up, you're in that arch position, you're coming back to hollow before you do your hip drive. As soon as you open your hips, you need to think about returning to a stiff hollow position. As you turn over, what happens is when people open the hips aggressively, they lose all tension in their midline so that when they turn over now, now they're in this piked up position, almost like an L sit. Whereas when you drive your hips or you open your hips to turn over the rings, if you keep tension through your hips and return back to a hollow, like a nice hollow shape, your feet will stay a lot lower. So what I try to think about or what I've cued this black square to think about is when you open your hips, think about staying hollow and driving your heels back towards your butt. Like keeping tension, driving your heels back towards your butt helps a lot. Um, but really it's keeping tension through the hips in my opinion. Yeah, they talk about this in the gymnastics course too, when and how hard it is to get into like a true pike position, and everyone's like struggling with it and stuff and not being able to do it. And then the instructor's like, "All right, so then why do you guys all try to do that in your ring muscle ups?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you keep that hollow and keep the feet a little bit lower, then it comes a lot easier. Asymmetric gears. He's my friend, but black square is still the right thing to call him in this moment. So. I'm not always super nice to my friends. <clears throat> um, this is a workout, man. I, w I wish we would get something like this in quarterfinals, but it ain't going to happen. They're too soft. This is going to be semifinals event three. If I did this workout like at body weight, so 185 and 10 down to one, would do you think where should I break the ring muscle ups? Because I could go unbroken, but I'd probably stand around too much. Uh, I would for sure say I wouldn't, I would really try to help you to be aggressive and say six, four, six, three, or five, four, then five, three, then four, three, and then probably four, two, or even three, three. And then I would try to go on broken five down to one. Um, I think you're capable of that. I think we need to work on your efficiency kipping out of the dip. I think really yeah. that's the only thing that holds you back on the muscle up is your rhythm and efficiency there. Yeah. When I did that work that I was talking about earlier, the 18 calories, six ring muscle up, 12 calorie, all my sets felt really good. My second to last one, I just started swinging a ton for some reason. Mm. And I'm still getting used to these straps. I've gotten more used to them, but 
there was one set I was swinging so bad and I almost failed my last one just because the, I was like all the way, like on one side of the rings. Yeah. Hey, to give this, to give black square, like their credit where credits due. Black Square texted me and was like, hey, tomorrow I'm going to be in Charlotte. I want to do a workout that you're really good at that involves muscle-ups that you would absolutely clap me in. So I got I got to, you know, I'm acting like I'm all hot and tough. But if this were a select pair of their wheelhouse movements, I'd be getting the old rear-end treatment for sure. So that's all. I know I feel like it was important for me to state that. Um, Burton's comment is or a good one to repeat up. workouts to test different pacing or breaking strategies uh i don't <coughs> maybe testing workouts for a competition that's coming up um but i don't think i like i'm not going to do grace one way and then say all right in a month i'm going to try this other way or in a week i don't do that um, but if you're preparing for competition, you have the workouts more than two weeks or two weeks out in advance. I think doing it once as is at like 90% effort, 85% effort to see how it feels where your sticking points are, are really important. And then testing a couple things of what's going to give you the best outcome and strategy for the workout for sure. Taylor's also allergic to doing the same workout twice in like the span of a year. <laughs> allergic, bro. Shut up. Yeah, dude. You start breaking out in hives and getting like mental fever sorry i don't like to retest every week dude i don't either i'm just saying you even talk about it for a second you're like bro that's so stupid <laughs> shut up <laughs> whatever dude that's a pet peeve i don't like retesting that frequently yeah i mean you have a good reason for it I mean, <laughs> like when you explain it it makes sense but Oof, so there, is... there you finish what was your time 13 56 that workout almost made me sick all over again. Thirteen fifty six. I think I could be sub thirteen thirty. What uh, going back to True's question, what sort of effort level do you think that was? That was probably a ninety five percent effort level. Yeah. The only thing missing was like, I I was never close to failing anything, so. Like when you're pushing on game day or in a competition setting, you're riding line right underneath failure where you're like almost there. I didn't quite get there. So I think that last like five, three to five percent was missing. And that you just don't have that unless you know, you know, money's on the line, whatever. Or uh, you're racing somebody who's really freaking good at the thing you're racing them in. I was murked though. We needed like an hour before we did anything else. Oh, we did yeah. power cleans. I did power cleans after that. You power clean 315 after that. Yeah. And then we did a workout where I did 25 foot rope climbs. If you can see that ceiling, let me go to, if you can see the ceiling through here wh where it connects, boom, right there. I was doing 25 foot rope climbs and they didn't get any of it on video. And we did another workout with 25 foot rope climbs today because I wanted to get it on video. And uh, Bryson let the freaking uh, company camera die. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason that the company camera is dead it's is because camera, there's going to be it's because there's going to be a new mic'd up video coming out in the next day or two. Sick video, so. yeah, I'm super stoked about that. But um, the workout we did today was a workout for next week. Three rounds. You did nine sandbag to shoulder seven shuttle runs, five rope climbs, three rounds mm -hmm. for time. I did uh, nine sandbag to shoulder, six shuttle runs, three 25-foot rope climbs. You went to 15 feet. Let's look at my uh, what it wants to play. Skyrim lo-fi beats, Lord of the Rings. If you, guys are, if you guys like to work, you know, if you like to get that work done and you just need some cool beats to put you in a nice chill mood, Lord of the Rings lo-fi beats is the way to go. So just a quick tip right there. That workout was awesome though. The, the 25 foot rope climbs really fun being up that high. I do not look down. Yeah, definitely not. All right. Well, that's it. That's all we got next time. We'll probably be back in like a week or so. If you got questions, save them until next week's show. We want to answer all the questions in the chat. Give you guys 
the nice tidbits and pieces of information that you really live and die for, um, like we do. And just stay on the lookout for the next mic'd up. Look on our Instagrams and YouTube and stuff like that. We'll oh, and it. we're and we're coming out with a sick video called "How to Do CrossFit the Right Way." Oh, it's yeah. gonna be a big one. This is like a Hiller Fit video. We're gonna go viral, or we're gonna get four views. It's gonna be hit or miss. So it could go either way, really hard. <laughs> All right, see you guys. Deuces. Uh oh, I almost left the studio instead of ending the.